get through our announcements. And David Wilkes will be teaching tonight. So we're all excited to see what, hear what David has brought to us that's been on his heart this week. So we want to remind everybody that today, uh, this week on Shabbat, we have David and Lori's wedding. So David's teaching this week. And they're getting married this week, which is exciting. Um, they, ha- they said there will be refreshments afterwards, so some coffee, punch, and cake. So feel free to come and feel free to stay after service and after the wedding. Uh, we have the farmer's market on Sunday at uh, 10. And let's see, we have next week we have the Hanukkah party. And Rosh Kodesh is the same time. Okay, so we have Rosh Kodesh and Hanukkah party uh, next, ma'am. And we have Java Nagila this Saturday night. What time is that? What time? Okay, so 6 p.m. we have Java Nagila. So this is a chock full Saturday. <laughs> we have Shabbat service that morning. We have the David and Lori's wedding. And we have Java Nagila. Sunday morning, after you're all worn out from all of those events, after the day of rest, after you're exhausted, <laughs> you know, we'll come, you can come back here on Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, for the farmer's market. Um, even if you're not selling anything, you know, come up here and see what people have and support people that are selling so that'll continue to grow. We have Rosh Kodesh and our Hanukkah party as a joint event on Tuesday night, uh, next week at 5 p.m. Uh, we want everyone to bring your Hanukkiahs so we can all light them together. One, I'm guessing we're going to put them on one giant table and we'll have one big bright table full of lights. Uh, remember on the Facebook page, we have the link to the Bradam shirt. You can order it off of Bonfire through the link, or you can call the office and they can walk you through how to order uh, your T-shirt. And let's see, those of you who are interested in the IDF fleece jackets from Danny Boys, um, call the office and they'll walk you through how to order that and how to pay. Uh, We have the calendars that are getting ready to go on sale, and those are synagogue-specific, right? Okay, so if you call the office, um, those will also be be available uh, this week. So if you want your calendar, go ahead and uh, call to pick that up. Speaking of calendars, we have the VTS dates already for next week, so go ahead and mark your calendars. The week of July 19th to the 23rd is when VTS will be. So no summer vacation plans, no beach trips. You have to be here for VTS. Yes, we need volunteers. Um, We need volunteers for the months leading up, and we need volunteers for that week. So go ahead and have in your head that uh, mid to late July will be VTS intensive. Uh, So uh, those of you who are pursuing membership, please fill out the contact form on the website, um, and then you'll get sent a link for the membership classes, and um, so that way you can have your own password and log in, and um, you know that way we can track you and know that you're taking the classes and passing the quizzes. Let's see, on the table, the yellow table, you can sign up for the text message notifications, or you can contact Leah, and she'll sign you up as well. And we're also looking for volunteers to run the Mevo and the live stream on Shabbat mornings and for nights like tonight. Tuesday night. So if you're interested in learning how to run the Mevo in the live stream, uh, you can ask anyone that works in the office um, to uh, see more about volunteering to do that. Uh, We're also looking for more volunteers to help serve noshes on Saturday morning. We have people already serving coffee. We're trying to up our game and start serving food again, but we need people to help specifically with serving the food so that way we can continue to remain COVID kosher. Um, um, at least give appearances. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, we have uh, Margo and is it Aline? Eliana? Uh, their bought mitzvahs is on December 26th. This is a big life step for them. They're becoming bought mitzvah, daughters of the commandments. They will be you know, taking on personally declaring to the congregation, to the community, that they're taking on the yoke of the Torah, the Torah of Yeshua, the commandments of God, um, publicly. And so we want to be there to support them for that. So come out, you know, it's appropriate to bring, you know, a small gift of, you know, uh, small items like candles and uh, different types of Judaica, as well as money. Um, 
So, you know, please be there to support them in that as it's a big, it's, I think it's the biggest thing and then marriage is the next, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, (laughs) yep, that's true. Money is a great wedding gift. (laughs) All right. Those, you know, wink, wink, David and Lori's wedding. Wink, (laughs) wink. All right. And, uh, you know, please remember to be praying for uh, Fred and Robin, Jerry and Sandy, Robert, Marquita, Mabel, Jeremy, uh, Misha, who is back in town, and, or not back in town, but back stateside, and she's doing well. But keep her in prayer. Uh, Zach, Jake, Gordon, uh, Rabbi Bell, Daniel, Ken, Glenn, Lauren, Kevin, Sarah, Rachel, Will. Um, Will, by the way, is out of a cast as of today. He's... He's in a boot now, so he can, you know, remove it as needed to, you know, um, help with mobility. And he's, uh, he can't put full body pressure on it yet, but he's doing much better. Stitches are out. He's doing a lot better and um, joking around as ever. Uh, Timothy, Tracy, Raphael, Bethany, Lita, Cynthia, Amanda, Jim, Francis, Renee, Denise, Zolina, Terry, David, Rob, uh, Karen, Richard, Patty, Noah, Tom, and Anita. And so uh, we want to remind everyone, too, to start. You can share this live stream as a watch party uh, for David's teaching tonight. Uh, so others can watch, not just those on the Bradon page, but those of your friends who may be interested in what we teach and do here. And so we are going to pray before I ask David to come up and to give us his teaching. So... Avinu Mokenu, our Father, our King, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for a country that gives us the freedom to come and study together your word openly and in public, to stream it openly and in public without censorship. Lord, we thank you for all the people who have made the effort to come out tonight to hear uh, David teach, to hear your word taught and proclaimed. Lord, we ask you for a healing touch on all those who are here and in our midst who need healing, physical or spiritual, Lord. We ask you to place your healing hand on those listed on this list, all those names we've mentioned, Lord, and those in our hearts. We ask you to lift lift them up in prayer and ask for their healing and just a touch of your hand, Lord. Father, thank you for all the blessings you've poured out on us this year, this month, this week. Uh, So much is going on, Lord, in the world, and it would seem almost like everything is caving in around us, but still life goes on and blessings and light shines forth. We have a wedding This weekend, Lord, we are celebrating the Festival of Lights starting this week. We are celebrating Rosh uh, Rosh Kodesh (laughs) next week. Lord, we still continue so much to hear noises of blessing the shofar and to light Hanukkahs and to drink wine and break bread in marriage. Lord, we thank you for the blessings you've given us. We thank you for your word that we're going to hear tonight. We ask that it would glorify you and bring blessing to all who hear Be with David as he teaches, Lord, and that he would continue to just pour forth your word from his heart, Lord, and speak to him and through him. In Yeshua's name, amen. All right, David, ready? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Jonathan. Careful, that's going to go up. It does go up. Yeah. That's why. There you go. There we go. Okay. That'll work. And if you watch here, you can see um, the bouncing is the sound reaching it. Okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. How is everybody this evening? Good. Good. And I just want to remind you that, that money is good wedding gifts. <laughs> but I'm not saying that for myself and Lori. Um, we have some other weddings coming up. You know who you are. And I, I suspect maybe some other ones. Um, perhaps. So... <clears throat> right. Right. All right, so I really don't have a theme tonight, and I don't have any slides. I usually like to do things the old-fashioned way and teach through the good old-fashioned, not even using a phone, but using the hard copy of the Scripture. Um, what I have tonight, I think, is more of a message. It's more of an exhortation, and it's going to be about How do we share the good news in these last days? Now, Rabbi Jonathan just prayed, and um, 
I agree with everything he said. I've been blessed this year with a very good, well, before I get into that, speaking of blessings, let me stop just for a second. I want to thank each and every one of you. Um, for those of you on the Brit Om page, um, I asked you to pray for my mom, and I asked you to pray for my stepfather, and I have a good news report. Amen. My stepfather is 80 years old, and he has a lot of medical issues, okay? He was a smoker for about 60 years, just all kinds of different stuff. And he got COVID. My mother also got COVID right after she was diagnosed with stage four cancer, which was inoperable. However, my stepfather, Charlie, is home now. Amen. He was in the hospital for over a month in rehab for over a month. God healed him of COVID and he's actually lost quite a bit of weight and he's actually doing better for himself than before he got sick. Amen. My mom uh, started taking her third chemo this, this today, I believe. And the first two went really well. This one went really well and she's not sick. She hasn't been sick. She hasn't lost any hair or anything like that. Wow. So thank you all very much and bless you and, and Adam and I bless each of you for, for remembering my mom and my stepfather. It means a lot to me. And for those of you out there who aren't here, thank you very much for your prayers. So when you hear Karen, that's my mom, when he mentioned Karen. All right. All right, so I've been thinking a lot about um, where we're at in the last days. And I've been blessed this year, and some of the, a lot of us have been blessed this year, but a lot of us have had some great tragedies this year. Um, people have lost jobs, people have been sick. Of course, we have, we have terrible things going on in our country with rioting and violence and um, just a lack of care and a lack of, uh, lack of morality. And then we got this COVID virus that we've been dealing with, so a lot of people, you know, I think 2020 has probably been one of the worst years that they've seen in a long time. Would anybody disagree with that? Has it been, been a great year for you? <laughs> Don't even talk to the people. Okay, Jonathan, I mean, Catherine, just because you can't see, she said, hey, it's been a great year. And it has <laughs> been because of Jonathan, and, and they're both very blessed, and that's true. I've also got a, gotten a really good job, but I know there's people in here that have lost, lost their business lost their jobs, and um, it's just been a rough year. So, but more than that, um, who would, who would, who, who thinks that we're not in the last days right now? Is there anyone that thinks we're probably still far away from seeing Mashiach return? Are you teetering? <laughs> You're teetering? Well, one of the reasons I'm up here is I, I wanted to share with you, um, I have a desire to teach. It's been placed on my heart. And there's been several of us that have come forward this year uh, with a desire to teach. And, um, but the thing about it is, is this applies to all of us, okay, what I'm going to share with you tonight. Um, it's an exhortation for sharing the Besorah or the good news in the last days. And it's something that we all need to be doing, whether we're studying to be rabbis or we're studying for ministry, or we're going, going into uh, maybe overseas ministry. It's something that we all need to be doing. Yeah, that's a nice ringtone. All right. So how do we do that? All right. Let me go a little bit further real quick. Um, I believe that the Messianic movement, the Messianic congregations are going to be front and center of what's happening before the return of Mashiach. And that's one of, the, one of the reasons why I myself have, am pursuing certain avenues to further the kingdom, hopefully, God willing. And I know some others are. We, we know we have Rabbi Jonathan, he's doing that. And then there's some other people that are uh, going down avenues like that. So we all need to be doing that in some way, shape, or form. Um, but how do we do it? And how do we do it with COVID? How do we do it with what I think is going to be increasing persecution? Um, 
And so not everybody's called to be a rabbi. Not everybody's called to, to ministry. It may be like, let's say, music, music ministry or worship team. That's, that's a form of worship, and it's a form of, it really is pouring forth what the Ruach's pouring into you, you're pouring out. And a lot of what our worship team sings is the Word of God, obviously. So, but what should we be doing at school, kids? What should we be, and I know you guys are homeschooled, but, <laughs> well, a couple of you go to ROTC, but. I think parents would urge you to continue. Right, even if they're doing school at home, home. It's, it's still. Right. It's still um, how do we do it day in and day out if we're not called to be a rabbi, or if we're not called to go into the mission field, or if we're not called to a music ministry? How do we go about doing that? Does anybody have any ideas? Do, do we share at work when we can? Right? Amen. Brandy said yes, and Brandy's part of a new ministry at Britom, and I just asked about it, and I think Joe is, and Ron as well, and that's, it's, they're going out in the streets, and they're, they're, they're proclaiming the Word of God out in the streets. Hey, there's Trinity. Hi, Trinity. <laughs> Those are the kinds of things that we need to be doing, okay? So by what authority do we do them? Well, we do it by Yeshua's authority, right? Mashiach gives us authority. So I'm going to show you, or I'm going to share with you. And again, I think this is going to be more exhortation than me going line by line teaching a book of the Bible. It's going to be kind of like a kind of a reminder of what we should be doing. And I think that we're at a very critical stage in our nation and in our world right now. And I know that as Messianic believers... Um, we're going to be at the forefront of what's happening. So I'm going to turn to Matthew 28. And you don't have to turn there. I'm going to read it. But I'm going to be Matthew 28, verse 16. <clears throat> and I think everybody's pretty familiar with this verse. Now, when the 11 disciples went to the Galilee, this is after uh, Mashiach is, has uh, shown himself to the disciples, to the mountain that Yeshua had designated. When they saw him, they worshiped, but some wavered. And Yeshua came up to them and spoke to them, saying, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So we know the authority comes from on high, and we know it goes to Messiah Yeshua. And then, therefore, he says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, immersing them in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Also known as the Great Commission, right? Yes. So what is it that Yeshua taught them to observe? All that I've, all that I've taught you. The Torah. the Torah, right? All right, so now I'm not trying to be cute here, but does the church know the Torah? I'm, I'm partially, right? Some of them do, and some of them are coming around. But this is where we come in. Um, and then, of course, on the other side of that, do the synagogues know the Torah? Absolutely. But do they know Mashiach? No. So we as Messianics, whether Jew or Gentile, not only do we have a great commission to continue this work, we need to be going into the synagogues and the churches, all right? And we need to not be afraid to stand up for what's right. The, the time is now, okay? And I think we're at a real, a real critical point. So, so why is it urgent now why is it urgent? Why, why do we think it's, why is it so urgent now? I mean, why 2020? Was it urgent in 1950 or 1875 or 1630? Yes. Absolutely. So what's the holdup? Who's holding up? Huh? Who's holding up? Well, I mean, why hasn't he returned yet? 
the time hasn't come yet, and I think that there's a lot of grace being given for people to repent. 2,000 years of grace. That's a lot of grace. That's a lot of grace, Mary Grace. You know what I'm saying? Huh? That, that, is a, that is a tremendous amount of patience. So, being as that we're in the last days, and I'm going to turn to Revelation just real quick. You don't need to turn there. How do we know? Well, first of all, we know Yeshua is coming back. And in Revelation 22, he says, verse 7, Behold, I'm coming soon. How fortunate is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. And then he goes a little further, and in verse 10 he says, Then he tells me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoers still do evil, the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do righteousness, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me, to pay back each one according to his deeds. So he spoke those words to John probably about somewhere between 80 and 90 AD when he wrote um, this, this revelation. And um, we've been waiting ever since, correct? But we know he's going to return. I'm going to go to, next I'm going to go to 1 Thessalonians, and I'll, I'll read that also. I'm going to share that with you. This, this also talks about the sense of urgency. And I'm going to verse, or excuse me, to chapter 5. Yep. So this is going to tell us, what are, we, what are we to watch for upon his return? It says, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. So I think we probably need to be paying attention. Even though it's been 2,000 years and we, we should be expecting them any time. Um, when Paul wrote this, he was probably expecting him any time also then. How much more should we be expecting him? How much more should we be doing the work of the kingdom right now? All right. When they are saying uh, shalom and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them, like a woman having uh, birth pains in the womb. There is no way they will escape. I don't know anything about birth pains. Um, I'm sure some of you all do. <laughs> they come up, I, I suppose they come upon you suddenly and they are tremendous and they're coming and they're not stopping. Likewise, uh, with the coming of the Lord, also, Keep in mind the flood. So everybody had a prophet for, oh, I don't know, however long it took them to build that ark, about 100 years or whatever it was for Noah. And then all of a sudden, one day, heaven opened up, uh, the deep opened up, and the next thing you know, everybody's gone except for Noah and his family. So it will be with the returning of the Son of Man. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in the dark. So that day might overtake you like a thief. Why? Because we're supposed to be awake. We're supposed to be paying attention. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. And I know they mean daughters as well. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as the others do, but let us remain on the alert and be sober-minded. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober-minded, putting on the breastplate of faithfulness and love and the hope of salvation as a helmet. That's a theme from another writing of Rob Shaul, the um, uh, armor of God. For God did not destine us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. He died for us so that, whether we may be awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in you are in fact doing. Are we doing enough to encourage one another? No. 
You guys can interact with me, it's fine. Um, I, I kind of like interaction. Um, again, I'm just, I'm a messenger. Um, I'm not saying I'm a prophet, I'm a messenger. And I really, I, this God's place this on my heart, that we need to wake up. We need to be lifting each other up and encouraging one another. We need to be helping one another develop the gifts that have been given us for the kingdom and go out and do that kingdom work. Now, we ask you, brothers and sisters, I'm going to continue on, um, to recognize those who work hard among you and who are over you in the Lord and correct you and to esteem them beyond all measure in love because of their work. Keep shalom among yourselves. So here's another reminder. One's to encourage, this is to keep peace and to have respect over those who are in authority over you. Um, hopefully nobody here has that problem. Right? Why you laugh, Jonathan? Yeah, I, okay, I think I got you there. I think I understand. You know, it might be, um, it might be hard to, I don't know, I, maybe I shouldn't go there. It might be hard for a young rabbi to come in and for people to maybe trust him and maybe, I don't know, listen. But understand that he was chosen. And he was chosen by a rabbi that... Um, I think is a tremendous man of God and a, a tremendous Torah teacher. So I trust his judgment to choose the next, uh, if you will, next wave of rabbi or rabbis. So I would encourage everyone to have that respect. Amen. We urge you, brothers and sisters, correct, correct the unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with everyone. This isn't talking about unbelievers. This is talking about believers, right? So do we correct the unruly? Do we have any? <laughs> Rabbi, do we have any unruly adults? I was, yeah. in case he was watching. Let's, let's correct one another, okay? Let's correct the unruly. Comfort the faint-hearted. Is there anybody that's faint-hearted sometimes? Yeah. I've been faint-hearted. Sam? Yeah? I've been faint-hearted. I've had, I'm dealing with a lot right now. But as you guys know, I shared some good news with you concerning part of that. So that, that's very uplifting, and it's, a lot of that has to do with y'all's lifting up lifting them up in prayer. Help the weak and be patient with everyone. If anyone is among us is weak, weak in the faith, maybe we're losing faith. Maybe, maybe we're questioning God. Maybe we're, you know, things just aren't going very well for us. We need to, our brothers and sisters to, to lift us up because we're weak and be patient with everyone. We've all got great patience, right? <laughs> I know I need to work on that, Okay. Right, guys? They're like, no, no, you're great. <laughs> See that no one repays evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. For this is God's will for you and Messiah Yeshua. Do not, oh, excuse me, I skipped. I skipped, my bad. Rejoice always. I don't do that. I'm going to confess these, what I think are sins. I think they can be sins before all of you. I don't always do that. And lately, I haven't done a whole lot. I think that's one of the reasons why I chose these. It goes with what I'm saying, but it's also a correction for myself. Pray constantly. In everything, give thanks. I know that I definitely need to do that. I'm guilty of being impatient. Like, I want certain things to happen, not like right now, but when I don't see them moving the way David wants them to move, I get a little impatient and I start complaining, which is, you know, kvetching is what Jews do right? very well. Well, I'm guilty. So I'm laying that out before all of you as well. Um, I need to do a better job of that. 
I have so much to be thankful for. I have my health, I have a family, I have, you know, I have great mishpoka, I have a great job. All right. For this is God's will for you and Messiah Yeshua. Do not quench the spirit. That's definitely a big one. Do not despise prophetic messages, but test all things, hold fast to what is good, keep away from every kind of evil. We test all things against scripture, right? Absolutely, and prayer and scripture. Now may the God of Shalom himself make you completely holy. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept complete, blameless at the coming of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Faithful is the one who calls you and he will make it happen. I'm going to stop there. The rest of it's just a small greeting there. So now I'm going to talk about a little bit about the signs of his coming. The signs. And maybe this is a good refresher too. Maybe we forget. I'm going to go to Matthew 24. These are the words of Mashiach himself. Now when Yeshua went out and was going his way, going away from the temple, his disciples came to point out to him the temple buildings. Don't you see all these? He responded to them. I guess they were admiring the temple and how beautiful it was. And, uh, you know, he's like, well, don't you see all these? Amen, I tell you, not one stone will be left here on top of another. Everyone will be torn down. We know that's true. We can go to the hotel today in Jerusalem. There's a little portion of the Western Wall that's left, and that's it. But as for the signs of the end of time, as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things happen? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Yeshua answered them, be careful that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and lead many astray. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's pretty common just about every day, isn't it? Um, false messiahs aren't as common as that, but they've certainly come and gone. Um, they've, they've, what's that? Go back to Jim Jones. Right. Yeah, Jim Jones. See that you are not alarmed, for this must happen, but it, it is not yet the end. For a nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes in various places. But all these things are only the beginning of the things. Ooh, ouch. You could probably add hurricanes, COVID, you know, all those kinds of things. We're definitely in the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to persecution and will kill you. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. I think this is where I want to focus on just, just for a second. Um, part of the work that we do is going out into the nations and going even among, not, our, not just within our nation, is that we're going to be persecuted. Mm -hmm. We might even get beat on. We might get spat on. We might get harassed. Our families might get harassed. We might be reviled and hated. We have to be prepared for that. and eventually probably killed, eventually. And I don't think that we're too far from that in this country, to be honest with you. I hate to be a, a Scrooge. The way things are going, I don't think we're far from it, folks. Then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. That's where we gotta be careful. That once that starts happening, we're not diming each other out and going, well, to save my skin, I'll say so-and-so's over there. We can't do that. How horrible would that be? Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray because lawlessness will multiply like it's multiplying right now as we speak. Along with the false prophets, yes. The love of many will, will grow cold. Boy, who thinks that we live in a loving world these days? 
I would say it's not only cold, it's probably frozen. They're scared. Huh? They are scared? I think that the word has, been, has gone out to all the nations. Another sign, in my opinion. How much, more, how much farther does it need to go? I mean, we even go, there's even missions into the most remote places in South America and Africa. And <clears throat> just just a, um, a side note. We need, to do, we need to do missions to Europe. We need to do missions to Australia. It's not just Africa and it's not just South America. What about Europe? Europe's been spiritually dead for how long? And, and a, well, and I was, and I was gonna say, Joe, that America's right behind her. There's only a couple few nations in Europe that have, still have a pretty good, you know, faithful, like Poland and Hungary, yes. very few. So yes, we need to continue to go to the poorer nations, but they've heard the gospel just as much as Europe has. And we need to go, like Joe said, we need to be, we need to be going out in the United States. Yeah, what's up, Sam? Uh -huh. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, right. then to the Gentiles of the nations. Right. Yep. Thank you. So when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one on the roof must not go down and take what is in his house. The one in the field must not turn back to get his coat. And woe to those who are pregnant and nursing babies in those days. Pray that your escape will not happen in the winter. For there will be great trouble, such as not happened since the beginning of the world until now, nor never will. I'm going to skip just a little bit because I can't believe it, but I'm actually starting to get a little bit pressed for time. Yeah, look at that. Holy, holy moly. All right, to Matthew 24, 30. When the sign of the Son of Man will appear, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the land will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory. He will send out his angels with the blast of a shofar, and they will gather together the chosen from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. The reason why I wanted to say that is because we were just talking about false prophets, or if they say, he's out there in the wilderness, or he's over here in New York City, or he's over here in Abu Dhabi, don't believe them, because he's going to return just the way he left. So just as a reminder to everyone. <clears throat> the blast of the shofar and from the heavens. All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the opposition from the enemy in these last days and as we're going forth to, to preach the message, the Basora, the good news. And then I'm going to wind up with uh, how we live in the last days. So I'm going to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. What kind of opposition should we expect from the lawless ones and from Hasatan? Understand this, that in the last days, hard times will come. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, hard-hearted, unforgiving, backbiting, without self-control, brutal, hating what is good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God holding to an outward form of godliness, but denying its power. That's pretty scary, folks. Now, all those things are awful. But they're talking about people that are proclaiming to be believers. 
holding to an outward form of godliness, but denying its power. As a side note, I know a man that has a very good job and dreads going there every day, even though it's a great job. And when, when he goes there, the people that are there are so filthy and disgusting and reprehensible. Just, you can't even have a basic conversation with them. Okay? Has, has anybody been in a workplace like that? Every other word out of their mouth is profane. And the things that they joke about, they're, they're just they're so ungodly and so profane, just about anything and everything. It's like everything is just evil. But I won't tell you who that guy is. It vexes his soul. And that's one of the reasons why I was saying earlier I like to complain, or he likes to complain. <laughs> But I was, given, I was given that blessing. I'll just say, I'll, you know, hey, if they, if they find out I'm talking about them, oh well, because I'm going to tell the truth. Amen. Um, God gave me that job as a blessing to bless my family and to, but sometimes I just, I just want to give up. I just want to go full time in the ministry now. I want to give up because these people make me just absolutely crazy. They're just so disgusting and filthy. And it's, it's awful. But I, I suspect the Lord's refining me. I suspect he's... That's right. Go ahead, Rivka. Sometimes. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't pray for bad things. You know, there's, there's another person that works there that's a believer. He's a Christian. I spend most of my time looking out for him because these people are so rotten, they're out to get him because they don't like him. So yes, sometimes I do, probably not as much as I should. And thank you for reminding me of that. But I spend a lot of time trying to keep us both um, out of trouble, so to speak. All right, so anyway, sorry about that. Sorry about that rabbit hole. Avoid these people, for among these are those who slip into households and deceive weak women, weighed down with sins, led away with various desires, always learning, yet never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so do these people oppose the truth, men corrupted in mind, but worthless concerning faith. But these people will not make any more progress, for their folly, like that of Janus and Jambres, will be obvious to everyone. You, however, closely followed my teaching, manner of life, purpose, faithfulness, patience, love, and perseverance. Some of those are fruits of the Spirit, as well as um, persecutions and sufferings that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and the Lord rescued me from them all. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Messiah Yeshua will be persecuted. But evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Rob Shaul goes on to uh, charge Timothy um, to proclaim the word, proclaim, proclaim the word and run, and run the race to the very end. Don't be afraid. A little bit later on after that, um, chapter 4, verse 3, it says, For the time will come when they will not put up with sound instruction, but they will pile up for themselves teachers in keeping with their own desires to have their ears tickled. We all know about that, right? We really need to stop that. We need to stand up and say enough, whoever it is, whether it's coming from a synagogue or a church. We need to stand up for the truth, Torah and Mashiach, and spilling Spilling. No, nothing got spilled. I'm joking. <laughs> they will turn away from hearing the truth and wander off to myths, which is exactly what they do. Man, I can't believe I'm getting pressed for time. 
I got to go to 1 Peter 4 because I'm just about run out of time. Yes. The last verse was 2 Timothy chapter 4. Yes. Thank you. All right. First Peter 4. How do we live in the last days? How do we function in the last days as believers? Focused on the Lord, that's right. Therefore, since Messiah suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because we are going to suffer. Whether it's, you know, a little name-calling or a little harassment, or maybe it's brutality. We just don't quite know. He certainly was brutalized. For the one who has suffered in the flesh is finished with sin. If we were still in sin, we obviously wouldn't be suffering. We'd just be doing whatever we want, not being persecuted. Nobody's going to bother us. As a result, he lives the rest of his time in the flesh, no longer for human desires, but for God's will. For the time has passed that was sufficient for you to carry out the desire of the pagans, living in indecency, lust, drunken binges, orgies, wild parties, and lawless idolatries. They are surprised that you do not run with them in the same riot of recklessness, and they vilify you. That kind of goes along with the um, <clears throat> co-workers. They just can't believe it. They just can't believe that you just don't want to go do what they do and act like they act. But they will have to give an account to the one who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this was the reason the good news was proclaimed, even to those now dead, so that though they are judged in the they might live in the Ruach before God. Now, the end of all things is near. Peter's writing this 2,000 years ago, folks. Above all, keep your love for one another constant, for love covers a multitude of sins. We have to remember to love one another, no matter what. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of the many-sided grace of God. We have to make sure we're using our, our gifts for one another and for the kingdom, for the furthering of the kingdom. Whoever speaks, let it be as one speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves, let it be with the strength that God supplies. So in all things, may God be glorified through Messiah Yeshua, all glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Loved ones, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. Instead, rejoice insofar as you share in the sufferings of Messiah, so that the revelation of his glory, you may also rejoice and be glad. If you are insulted for the name of Messiah, you are fortunate for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful Several verses there. So kind of to summarize, where's my time clock? A little over 10 minutes. A little over 10 minutes, thank you. Um, I guess what I really wanted to say is that we're at, we're at the time of the end and things are getting to the point where they're almost absolutely crazy. We have to be alert, we have to be awake, we have to be we have to make sure that we're following after what God wants us to do. And I think each and every one of us is important. Absolutely, each and every one of us is important in the kingdom. And I just wanted to give a reminder and um, an exhortation to everyone to do everything that you can to further, your king, further the kingdom in your, in your part of the world, in your part of the kingdom, whether it's at work, whether it's here in the synagogue, whether it's going on street ministry, um, no matter, at home with your children, all right? We need to be continuing to do those things. And also, I challenge each and everybody to think, how can we do better as a messianic movement? How can we do better 
for both the church, toward the church, and toward the synagogue. Huh? We can encourage one another, but, but I say that not to get your answers from me, but so that we can collectively come together and we can start making a difference in Pensacola, right? So I hope and pray that that'll be something that'll be on your minds um, because I think the time is short. And as the scripture tells us, the time is short, and the time was short 2,000 years ago. So how short is it now? Um, that's pretty much all I have when I wanted to share. Does anybody have any questions or anything that they would like to add?